Hello and welcome to a new Minecraft video. Today I'll be showcasing and going into a bit of detail on how to make Darth Maul in Minecraft. Now, it has been a long time since I've made a Minecraft video, so if you are subscribed to me for the NFL and college videos, don't worry, those will still be going up every week. But now the, there will be a, maybe a Minecraft video going up once or twice a week as well. Anyway, let's get right into this. By the way, this is in 1.15. If you're in 1.16, it won't work. I don't know about earlier versions, but I know it doesn't work in 1.16. Uh, anyway, let's just get started here. As you'll see, we'll get three different items. We have a uh, lightsaber, a force throw, and a lunge. Now, you actually saw these a little bit in the intro, but I'm going to show you what you can actually do with them. Okay, so the lightsaber actually has a couple different uses. The first one being just a normal melee weapon, and it actually does a lot of damage, 10 attack damage, which is way more than a diamond sword. And you can actually change that to whatever you want, but I just have it at 10 for now. Uh, but the cool thing about it is that if you want a ranged attack, you can actually throw it by, cl by clicking Q. And then whatever direction you're facing in, it'll go about 5 or 6 blocks that way and then come back to you. And because it's a one hit kill, you can actually take out a large group of mobs. So let's say you got like 10 zombies chasing you. You can take them all out in one hit. Uh, it can be a little dangerous if you miss though, because then... It does take a while to get back to you, and then you're stuck without without a lightsaber or without any weapons. Uh, so you probably don't want to do that. Okay, now we have my favorite one, which is the force throw. And what the force throw does is that it picks up whatever mobs are around you and then throws them in whatever direction you're looking at. And this can be anywhere you're looking. So I can just look straight up in the air and throw them directly up in the air above me. Uh, if I try to throw them underground, they just pop right back up. So you can't just suffocate them in the ground. Uh, it doesn't actually deal any damage, it just picks them up and throws them, but you can you can deal a lot of damage with this uh, by throwing them off cliffs and stuff. And finally we have the lunge, and the lunge is actually the most simple but probably the most effective one out of the three. What it does is it sends you in whatever direction you're looking at and then deals damage to whatever mob you hit. Uh, and it deals about half the damage as the lightsaber throw, but it is a lot faster and a lot quicker than the lightsaber throw, so you can kill most mobs in one to two hits. Also, if you do it into the ground, you just get teleported back up. You can't, like, teleport to the ground or anything. Starting with the lightsaber throw. Now, this one was actually a huge pain to make, but pretty much how I did it was I used four different variations of the lightsaber throw, uh, and then I used those as templates, and all these are just carpet on string. That's as close as I could get to it looking like a lightsaber, but uh, I'm not going to go very in-depth with this one because I don't recommend it. It's very time-consuming, but if you are curious on how I did it, here's a basic rundown. Uh, pretty much what I did was I used an execute if statement to uh, to see to, to try to find where you're looking and this is your rotation to see if you're looking between 107 and negative 70 and your rotation you can actually find if you go shift F3 uh, and it's this number right here uh, behind the slow falling this negative 88 uh, as you can see when I begin to turn you see that number goes down and then to a positive number and then back to a negative number Pretty much what it's doing is trying to see if you're looking in between 107, so right about here, to 170. So if you're looking anywhere in between those two numbers, then it'll it'll outcome true, and then move on to the next part of the command, uh, which is it's testing if the if if there's an item in the uh, in the world that has that's has the MBT tag of being a red banner. So if it's a red banner and it has the name Darth Maul's lightsaber. Uh, if, it, if, it, if, it, if it meets that criteria exactly, it'll move on to the next command, which is executed at the nearest player. And pretty much what this is going to do is it's going to run a clone command. Uh, so when I said I was using those as templates, I meant I'm using those as templates to clone from. So pretty much what it's going to do is going to clone one of those and then clone it at your position, uh, either on the positive X, negative X, or negative X, Z, positive Z, one of those. Uh, so it's going to take one of these and then clone it next to you and then after that it's going to go to this one which is going to destroy the item and then it's going to run another clone command and then right here it's just going to play a sound. Uh, you don't have to do that but I thought it might make it a little more interesting but the next one is actually it gets this one destroys all of the red carpet within 10 blocks of you and then this one destroys all of the light gray carpet and then there is actually another one that that'll destroy all of the string. So pretty much what it does is it it clones it clones one of these next to you and then destroys it and then clones the next iteration of it to make it look like it's actually being thrown. So it's being it's pretty much being cloned, destroyed, cloned until it gets all the way back to you. 
So it's just going to continue to clone and then destroy until the lightsaber comes back to you, in which the last command that's going to run is this one, which is going to give you the lightsaber back. It's going to replace the item in your zero container, which is this one right here. This is your zero container, zero through nine on the hotbar. It's going to replace it with a red banner with the name Darth Maul's lightsaber. And it's going to add a bunch of attributes on it like attack speed and attack damage. And you can change this however you want. Uh, you can make the attack damage 2000 if you wanted to. I'm actually going to link in the description the website I use for this. Uh, so you can just go to that one and then type in whatever attribute you want in and how much. And then it'll do it automatically for you so you don't have to type all of this stuff out. So that'll be in the description. So I pretty much did that eight times for each of the directions, including diagonal. Uh, that's why it was so time consuming. That's why I don't really recommend it, but you can try it if you want. How I did the damage was I did an execute as nearest entity type equals anything but the player. So when you put an exclamation point be before the Minecraft colon player, it's going to be looking for anything but the player and it's going to execute at that entity. And it's going to test if there's a block in its head or chest. And if the block is red carpet, it'll give an effect to that entity. So when you use add S, it's using the entity that you've already defined pre uh, earlier. And what it's going to do is it's going to give it instant damage uh, for one second with an amplifier of amp amplifier of two. And it's going to hide the particles, which is just that's what true means. Uh, so if if a, if red carpet hits one of those mobs, it'll it'll give it instant damage too. Uh, that's pretty much how I did it, and then I did that for, you know, the zombies and skeletons, I had to do instant health, and then for the gray carpet as well. Uh, that's pretty much all for the lightsaber throw. Okay, so now we have the force throw, and this one was actually a lot easier to do than the previous one, but how I did it was I used a repeating command block set to always active, and then I ran an execute command at the nearest player and as the nearest entity, type equals Minecraft colon item. So what that's doing is that it's running it as if this entity right here was typing out and running the command itself. And then we're using a comma and then NBT equals item ID. So what this is doing, it's searching for an item and then with the NBT tag of being a beacon. So it's searching for any beacon that's found in the world. And then we're using a tag to find even more attributes about it. So the tag, we're looking for a name. So a display name and force throw. So what this is going to do is it's searching for a beacon in the world with the name of force throw. And if it finds that, it's going to run a play sound effect. And I'm using the uh, beacon deactivation sound effect, but you can use any sound you want. That's just the one I thought worked the best for the ability. And then we're using ambient and then add all entities in the area. So what this command is doing is that it's looking for a beacon in the world with the name of force throw. And then if that is found, it's going to it's going to run this command right here, which is a play sound effect. And it's also going to trip off this comparator, which in turn powers all of these command blocks right here. Uh, and this, this first one right here is, an ex is another execute command at nearest player again. But this time we're only using one command. We're using a run a summon command and we're summoning a Minecraft chicken uh, in five blocks in the direction that you're looking at. So normally right here we use uh, these tildes, which this is for relative coordinates. Uh, but these are for the, this is for the direction you're looking in. So it's five blocks in the direction you're looking in, uh, five blocks ahead of you, and then one block uh, on the Y axis, which is above you. So it'll, it'll summon a chicken, five blocks in the direction you're looking and one block up. And that should, that should uh, summon it right in, right in your crosshairs of where you're facing. And right here, we're actually giving the uh, chicken a bunch of attributes, like having no AI. So it's not going to move around. It's, uh, it's not going to make any noise or it still will have a uh, health, but we're giving it a custom name as well called FC. Uh, and we're also changing the death loot table to empty. So that's when it's, uh, that's for when it's killed, it won't drop anything. And we're also setting the health to 100 and, uh, you don't have to do this, but I did, uh, I set the attributes and the max health to base 100, which is what it's normally at. You don't have to do that. Uh, the command block on the right here is just another kill nearest item. So that's, for when you drop the beacon, it, it'll it kill it if it's found. Uh, and this one right here, this one is another execu execute command at the nearest entity of chicken name equals MC. So if you remember, we just uh, summoned a chicken with the name of FC in this command block right here. And now we're looking for that one and we're executing it at that chicken. And then we're running an effect, uh, an effect give to any of the 
uh, entities within a dis within a five block radius of it. So we're using distance equals uh, dot dot five. So that'll be five blocks in a radius in a circle around the uh, around that entity we just found. So the FC chicken, and it's it's also only giving the uh, entities that are anything but the player. So it's not going to do anything to the player. And, we're, and the effect we're giving it is levitation two, or a levitation for two seconds, uh, and the amplifier of one. And we're also hiding the particles. Uh, the one over here on the oh, we just did that one. Uh, the one on top right here, I mean, uh, is that, is also an effect. But we're giving the FC chicken. Uh, this is the same command as the other one on the left, but this time we're only giving it to the chicken that we summoned. We're giving invisibility for ten thousand seconds. Now the ten thousand seconds. For most effects, that'll just uh, be an infinite amount of time, but we're giving 225. Now, that doesn't really matter. That's just the amplifier for invisibility. It doesn't really change, but uh, the, and also another true uh, for hiding the particles. And the next command block right here, which is one after the, all the rest of them, it's going to uh, do another search at, a, at, the, at the FC chicken that we summoned earlier, and it's also going to run an effect. Uh, it's pretty much going to be doing the exact same thing as this command block right here. But instead of levitation, it's giving a glowing effect for three seconds, and everything else should be the same. Uh, also, you might want to ins also instead of having a uh, only everything but the player, have everything but a chicken as well, so then the chicken doesn't start levitating as well. Uh, and then I have a three repeater delay here on max ticks, uh, but that you can have that however you want, and you can also change these settings for for. The effects as well so you can have them float higher for longer uh, you can do whatever you want there okay so after the three repeater delay it's gonna set off these three command blocks right here and what this first one does it's an execute at nearest player and as the nearest entity type equals Minecraft chicken name equals FC so the same kind of thing we did uh, in a command block earlier and then once it finds that chicken it's gonna run a TP command and right here it's actually TPing it's gonna teleport all of the entities within a Besides the player, all of the entities within a seven block radius of, of the chicken. Uh, and it's going to teleport it 15 blocks in the direction that you're facing, and then one block above. So what the one block above is just for, it's just so that it lines up with your uh, your crosshair. Uh, next command is just, we're, after that we're just going to kill the chicken. Uh, make sure it's name equals FC so you don't just kill all the chickens in the world. Uh, right here we're actually just going to give you, it's going to give the... Uh, item back this is the same command we use for the lightsaber except this time we're changed we change it from a red banner to a beacon and then the text from a lightsaber to just we're gonna call it force throw you can name it whatever you want uh, the next work command right here is we're actually summoning a new chicken within the fi within the 15 blocks instead of five so it's the exact same command as before but instead of five blocks uh, in front of you we're teleporting it or, or summoning it 15 blocks and that's actually going to be where your uh, where the uh, the enemies that you teleported uh, 15 blocks ahead of you it's going to teleport it in the exact same spot as them this time we're going to call it FC fix and we're also going to do the exact same thing we did earlier with the death loot table so then when it dies it doesn't drop anything so there are no like extra items laying around or anything uh, now after that it's actually going to uh, set off this chain right here of commands the first one right here is we are teleporting, uh, or executing at the chicken we just summoned, so the FC fix, and then we're doing an if block uh, within if the block, and we're using tildes this time instead of the uh, instead of the ones for the direction you're facing. We're using tildes now. This is relative coordinates, so this is uh, at the head of the chicken. If there's a dirt block there, uh, we are going to run a TP Minecraft anything but the chicken, and then distance equals four so any entities around the chicken we're actually teleporting it up 15 blocks in the air and it's pretty much going to do that again for each block so that one the first one was the uh, was a piece of dirt this one is going to be a stone block and we're just going to do the same thing we're going to run a TP uh, all of the entities besides the chicken within a four block radius of the chicken we're teleporting it 15 blocks above the ground now it's 15 blocks because if you uh, if you use the force throw and then throw it underground, the farthest it can go down is 15 blocks, and it's gonna summon it. It's gonna TP it back up to the to the to ground level. Uh, this can't. Oh, whoops. Now we're also doing this. This is also because if you don't have the if you don't fix it, 
have the SC fixed, then you're just going to summon or you're going to TP all of the enemies straight into the ground and then they just suffocate in there. Uh, this way it's not too overpowered. Uh, so that's what the FC fix is for and the rest of these are pretty much just for the different types of blocks that you might come across. So this is sand and then this one uh, is gravel and sandstone. So you can just do this for as many blocks as you want and this one's diorite. So that's just the, the blocks that were that I found around here. And this last command right here is just going to kill the, the new chicken that we made, FC fix. And that should be about it for the force throw. And now for the lunge, and this one's probably the easiest out of the three. Uh, we're using, we're going to start off with the exact same command that we used for the uh, force throw ability. So instead of a beacon, and uh, we're using a arrow, and we're and instead of a force throw being the name, we're using a uh, the name of lunge. So you can just copy paste the exact same uh, command from this one into this one, but just change the the item you're looking for and the name. And after that, when it's found, oh, also it's gonna, it's just gonna play the sound. I use the exact same sound as the force throw, but you can change that if you want. Uh, when that's ha when that command goes off, it's gonna activate this comparator, which will kill the uh, will kill the item, so that the arrow that you threw out it'll, it'll destroy it, and it's gonna teleport you one block in the direction that you're facing. And pretty much that's how this that's how this ability works. All of the commands on the bottom right here are teleporting you one block in the direction that you're looking at. And you can do this as many times as you want, so it can go farther than just you know the six or seven blocks I have it going now. Uh, the first command right here is a repeat command, and this is going to go off as soon as uh, redstone hits this block. It'll activate this one, so make sure you have this as needs redstone instead of always active. Uh, what it's going to do is it's going to execute at nearest player, and this is an unless. Instead of if, we're using unless. Uh, so unless the block that's in the head of the player is air, it's gonna TP the player one block above. So what this means is that if you if you go into the ground and if there's anything but air at, at your head level, it'll teleport you one block up. So that's for when when I use this, uh, it, since it's teleporting me one block in the direction I'm facing, if, if that command wasn't there, I'd be going straight through the ground. So, but instead it's finding that there's, not, that there's a block in there that isn't air and it's teleporting me one block up. So then I can't go underground at all. And the next block is a chain with always active on. And what this is going to do is that it's just executing at another player or at the nearest player again. And then if entity, uh, nearest entity distance equals two. So if there's any entities within a uh, radius of two of the player, it's going to give them effect of anything but. So it's affecting all of the entities besides the pig, cow, and sheep, horse. So all of the. Uh, friendly mobs it's going to give instant health to so anything but those mobs it's giving instant health and that's because uh mobs like zombies and skeletons if you give them instant health they actually take damage and if you give them damage they actually take health it's a little confusing but uh that that should do it for for the for the friendly mobs and then this one right here is just the opposite so instead of the friendly mobs we're using skeletons and horses and drowns so we're going to use instant damage for this so this is if you want to be able to hurt like uh, like cows and pigs and stuff. It's gonna give them instant damage instead of the uh, hostile mobs, and it's the same thing for all of these right here. Uh, this is so then every time it teleports you, it's running all these commands again. So every time it teleports you forward, it's checking to see if there's a block in your head or if there's or, or if you've come and if you or if you've hit an entity at all. So just copy and paste those exact same three commands right there and all of these, and right here at the end. We're just doing one more teleportation command, and now we're just going to give the item back, so the arrow, and instead of lunge, the same command we used for the other two abilities. Instead, we're using arrow and then naming it lunge, and right here, this is just the final bit of, this. it's going to be the same thing as these. And finally, we have the force jump, and this one you're actually going to have to type out a command in chat outside of a command block, and we're actually going to type out this exact command right here. We're doing scoreboard objectives add jump, so we're adding a uh, an objective on the scoreboard, and we're calling it jump. And this objective is going to be a Minecraft.custom, and then colon Minecraft.sneaktime. So this is this objective is going to count the amount of time that you're sneaking, and Minecraft actually measures time in ticks. So the amount of ticks that you're sneaking. Uh, so as soon as you hold down the shift button or whatever your crouch button is, it's going to start counting the amount of ticks that you have been. Uh, that you've been crouching for 
And once you've typed that, typed that command in chat, you can start working on the first, first command block, which is a repeat, and then you're going to want to set this to always active. I just have it on uh, needs redstone, so that it doesn't keep doing it every time I crouch. But here we're going to execute if entity, and then nearest player, and then scores equals curly brackets right here. You need to have these. Jump equals 1 point point 10,000. So what this is going to do is it's going to search for a player with the with that has scores of jump equals uh, one through a thousand. So if your scoreboard of jump or whatever scoreboard you want to name it, if it's between one and ten thousand, it'll come out true. So as soon as you hold down uh, as soon as you hold down shift or whatever your crouch button is, it's going to start counting up the amount of ticks, and then it's going to add that to the scoreboard. So if I hold it down for five ticks. It'll equal five, and that's in between. That's between one and ten thousand. So it'll equal true, which will make this comparator turn on. And then these three command blocks will will be powered. And this first one right here is actually going to. It's going to be another scoreboard command, and we're using a players instead of objectives, and we're setting the nearest player jump score jump score to zero. So we re, so we're resetting the score, and then we're giving the effect. We're giving another effect to the player. Uh, we're giving levitation for three seconds with an amplifier of four and then we're we're saying true to hiding the particles and here we're going to do the exact same thing uh an effect of but this time slow falling and eight, for eight seconds and we're also going to hide the hard hide the particles on this one as well and after that it's going to run through a re repeater and it's going to hit this command right here which is going to actually remove the objective completely and then what I have here is a long delay of repeaters. So this, you can time this for yourself, but uh, whatever, however long you want the levitation to last, you're gonna have to change the amount of repeaters you have here. So this is gonna give you, uh, this is gonna add the uh, scoreboard back. And I have it timed up to where as soon as you run out of the slow falling and hit the ground, it'll you'll be able to do it again. So it's gonna add the scoreboard back up. So that means that you wouldn't be able to just fly by continually pressing uh, the shift button uh, you have to actually wait until you land and then you can press it again that's when it gets added back so, also here's the command I use for the for this Darth Maul head I know it looks like a lot but you can actually just go to a, a website and uh, copy the command from the website and copy it right into your world and I actually have a link to that website in the description uh, they have tons of heads I think it's over like a thousand different skins you can choose from but yeah that'll be linked in the description so that's about it, and I didn't go into huge detail about all of the commands. I just wanted to show the general idea of how I made it. Uh, but now, let's see what we can really do with this. Okay, here we are. Darth Maul and 100 zombies. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this block, and I'm going to fly right over there and change into survival. Uh, I don't know how this is going to go, but let's find out. Oh, I'm already, I'm already flying. Change right back into survival, and here we go, here we go. Uh, let's try that real quick, and I'm, I'm going to try to take out a bunch of them. Oh, man. No, 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 no. Okay, okay, I'm just going to throw as many, as many as I can. Okay, let's try the lightsaber throw. Oh, yeah. Oh, the lightsaber throw is perfect for this. Man, the baby zombies are always horrible. Uh, I lifted a bunch of them up, but nobody went flying. Uh, oh, I don't have any hunger. I can't. Re I can't regenerate any health. Okay, let's try another lightsaber throw. Uh. Okay, here we go. Here we go. One more lightsaber throw, and okay, maybe a couple more, and that should do it. There we go. Actually, that, that kind of made it worse. I just spread them all out. No, 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 no. Okay, there we go. Ooh. I'm, I'm back at full health. I'm not sure how that happened, but... See what we can do here. And this should be it. And... There we go. Okay. There it is. Darth Maul versus a, a, a hundred zombies. Darth Maul wins. Okay, so I just realized something. There, there appears to be a, some flaw in the uh, in the commands. Uh, I was trying to figure out why I gained full health 
uh, when I fought zombies and it's because I used the lunge and in this command right here I forgot to add a uh, anything but the Minecraft player so whenever I did the lunge it gave me full health uh, so it's a, it's an easy fix we're just gonna go type equals and then player and then another comma and just replace that with the other commands there and that should fix it I think uh, I think I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna fight the 100 zombies again just because that was kind of unfair I got full health when I was like on three hearts so I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna copy it over to the rest of those uh, the rest of these and then I'm gonna redo that the fight and here we are again Darth Maul versus 100 zombies take two this time hopefully there are no problems I'm gonna do the same thing I did before I'm gonna break this and then fly over there and then change back to survival okay let's go uh... Uh oh, there's a baby zombie standing right there already. All right, three, two, one, here we go. Oh, I'm missing three hearts already. Okay, it doesn't matter, it's fine. Uh, I'm gonna try to use a force throw to not come back a little bit. Yeah, there we go, okay. And last time it didn't seem like the lunge worked all that well against a group. I think it might work better. Oh no, <laughs> and I'm dead already. <laughs> no, wait, what? How did that happen? Wait a second, death, oh. And once again, there seemed to be a little bit of, there seemed to be a problem in the code. I'm gonna have to fix that again. And once again, it's the lunge causing all the problems. Uh, it's the same problem as before. I, I just forgot to add the exclamation point player here to do anything but the player. So it did the exact same th thing as this one with the health, but instead it just ended up killing me because it does damage. So you just gotta put the type equals exclamation point player there and then do that for all four of these and that should fix it. And here we are again, hopefully third time's a charm. I'm gonna do the same thing as last time, and here we go. I'm gonna fly over here, and again, there's a baby zombie over here waiting for me. And changing to survival, whoops. Three, two, one, go. Okay, here we go. Hopefully this is the final one. Hopefully there's no more uh, bugs. Uh, okay, they're a little more spread out than than last time but let's try to spread them out a little bit more okay there we go okay so yeah the lunge does not really work very well especially against a group I'm gonna try it one more time though yeah that's not not a good idea okay no uh, no 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 okay yeah definitely a lightsaber throws the best against uh, a group force throw is actually pretty good too against a group if you want to spread them out a lot we go and if you want to get them to back off a little bit oh man this is actually a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be yeah there we go okay okay come on yep just keep just keep throwing just keep throwing the lightsaber come on Did I get him? Oh, okay. There's only a couple left. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna risk the lunge this time. I'm just gonna use the the throw. All right. Whew. That was actually pretty close. I was down to three hearts. That's it. Once again, we've proven Darth Maul versus a versus a hundred zombies. Darth Maul wins. And there we have it. It took a few tries, but we eventually got there. And now we know Darth Maul versus a hundred zombies. Darth Maul wins. But for real, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe for more, and if you are interested in a map download, I might be able to put one up, but if you are interested, just comment below and I'll try to put one in the description. Uh, but thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.